Good evening and welcome. I'm Murph, and recently Battery Stable Games announced that 30XX is ready to release version 1.0 coming out August 9th. Or, uh, earlier today, if I get this video out in time. And to celebrate, I'd like to put forth a tier list geared towards helping new players like you put their hard-earned memoria to good use for getting their first clear. That said, if you're unfamiliar, 30XX is a roguelike that takes inspiration from the Mega Man X series, where you can play as either Buster Shooting Blue Bomber Nina or the Scarlet Swordsman himself, Ace. And just to make sure we're all on the same page, Moria is the currency you can use for permanent upgrades to your character in between runs. Now before we get started though, I'd like to mention that this list won't take into account the classic Mega Man-like mode, since their Moria upgrades are different and are probably less necessary since you can rest back at home base between levels. Alright, so here's the tier list and... actually... You know what? We're gonna change things up here. This is going to be our tier list. As you can see here, I'm gonna be grading all of these upgrades based on both their effectiveness versus their cost. So ideally, the best ones to choose from will be somewhere over here in this bottom right sector, while the worst ones are gonna be up here in the top left. Not to say that they'll be bad, just niche or dependent on other upgrades to get their full value. With that in mind, I feel that one of these upgrades is far and away THE best one to prioritize for getting your first clear. So before we start, if you're already familiar with 30XX, please feel free to pause the video here and let me know down in the comments below which upgrade you think I'll pick. And no, it's not the auto tank. Alright, first off, we'll start with the cheapest upgrade you can get, additional health and energy. Each time you invest in either, you'll get 10 health or energy respectively which will allow you to go from 80 all the way to 120 when maxed out. That said, I'm going to brush off my certified Elden Ring Enjoyer badge and talk about Vigor, or health in this case. Upgrading your health is going to allow you to survive for longer and thus keep you in the run so you can learn enemy patterns and take bigger risks during your runs for potent rewards since the further you get into a run, the tougher the enemies are going to be. Your health is going to be the first one we put down here in the bottom right. Because as you get more familiar with the game, you'll find yourself getting hit less often, and at that point, you'd probably feel comfortable picking up augments like the Glass Cannon that sacrifice max health for attack power. So the key point is that health upgrades will help you get to that point of understanding much sooner than otherwise. It just lets you experience more game before you're kicked back to the hub area so Alexia can fix you up. But that brings us to energy next. This one kind of depends on both your choice of character and what powers you find that you like using. For Nina, the powers she gets from bosses are strong and can be combined and split back up as you please. Meanwhile, Ace's powers, or techniques as he calls them, feel more akin to an extension of Ace and ended up bringing out his toolkit in different ways. The reason I bring this up here is that, to my knowledge as an Ace player, Ace's energy region is based on how many stacks of style he can build up and his max energy. So the higher his max energy is, the faster his energy regens so long as you can maintain a certain amount of style. But with Nina, last I heard she recovers a static amount of energy regardless of her maximum. It doesn't really change the rating for this one, but it is something to consider. Because you want more energy for Nina to use those strong powers, but you also want more energy for Ace so his energy recovers more quickly even if his skills aren't quite as wild. Next, let's talk about salvaging. At base, it's only going to cost you 10 memoria, but the second tier is going to be worth 50. By default, when the game offers you an augment, you always have the option to just ignore it should you feel it'll be unhelpful or even harmful to your build. So what this upgrade allows you to do is to take those augments that you're feeling meh about and convert them into scrap to exchange with the scrapper character that sometimes spawns during a level. Without this upgrade, scrap is kind of difficult to accrue, and that means that if you don't invest in this, that you'll largely be missing out on another form of currency that you'd otherwise be taking advantage of. And the second upgrade takes this even further, and allows you to scrap the first reward you get from a challenge, if for some reason none of them really click with you. So this is easily another one that belongs in the bottom right. It just feels like a basic system or mechanic of the game that choosing to skip it kind of feels wrong to me at this point with my experience. Alright, now we're getting to one of my favorites. Dally. For the small price of 10 memoria, you too can enjoy this cute little companion. Whenever you start a run in 30XX, Dally will show up to offer you a free weapon you can either toggle or swap between. For Ace, it's really just that an alternate weapon that changes how you approach situations. But for Nina, they're modifiers for how her projectiles function, so they often have a core point cost attached to them. You can look more into the specifics on the wiki that I've linked down below, but to make a long story short, this is a really easy and convenient way to get access to these tools without having to hope you find one at the end of a challenge. If you offer Dally a little bit more memoria, her wares will naturally expand and offer you three options to choose from. 
this time throwing core augments into the mix. And as their name suggests, while they do have a point cost associated with them, they end up modifying your abilities as a whole, letting you do things like having the ability to air dash or having it so that fully charging up an attack automatically charges your next one. These augments are incredibly powerful, and I often find the right combination of these can let you just snowball a run, which just goes to reinforce the importance of the salvaging upgrade we just talked about before, since you can use any leftover scrap that you get to get more core points. That said, Dally does have one more tier of investment, as you can see. Now, despite having plenty of Bomori to purchase it, this is more of a player-specific preference, but as someone who loves Ace's alternative weapons and core augments as a whole, I don't really want the new stuff that Dally adds to her selection that'll end up diluting the pool of options that I already like. At this tier, she still offers you three options, but she throws powers that you'd otherwise get for beating bosses, remnant augments that you can potentially get for skipping on collecting a boss's power at the end of a level, or prototype augments that are powerful but often come with some kind of restriction or downside that you have to otherwise play around. Now, because Nina has the ability to combine and split boss powers to make different combinations for adjusting to different situations, just being able to start a run with a power can already be a huge boon. And if you love picking up boss powers, that means you'll never have the chance to pick up Remnant Augments outside of Tier 3 Dally's Shop. So if you really like boss powers, Remnants, or Prototypes, then investing in Tier 3 can definitely be worth saving up for. Even with all that said though, Tier 2 Dally alone belongs down here in the bottom right. She's literally just giving you free stuff at the beginning of the run, regardless, for a minimum investment of 10 Memoria. Okay, next we'll be talking about the Auto Tank. Get it. No, seriously, I mean it. You'll thank me later. At 15 Memoria, this amounts to 40 extra health. Compare this to the direct health increase we ranked earlier, and it's no contest. When you're about to bite the dust, the auto tank will activate and just bring you back with 40 HP. Future upgrades aren't too important, but they add 20 extra health to the tank that you have to then manually fill up yourself by grabbing healing items during a run while you're at full health. So it's just that nice bit of extra insurance during some of the tougher sections of a run, so this one's going in the bottom right, regardless of even if you just take it at tier 1. Well dang, it looks like at this rate every upgrade is just going to be good. Well, that ends now. It's really nice to see that a lot of the cheaper upgrades are good, but all good things must come to an end. Now we're going to be touching on some of the more okay level upgrades. And we're going to start this with getting extra... bolts. Starting at 25 Memoria and inflating in price each time, as all of these upgrades do, you can start each one with extra bolts per tier invested. On its own, this doesn't do a lot. There's nothing that shops shells that's worth 5 bolts exactly or less, but instead of thinking it as something that makes your first item free, you should think of it as an aid to getting your first item with the bolts you'll be earning over the course of your run. At max level, you'll be starting runs with 20 bolts, or even 50 bolts if you invest your Titan Charge, which can actually net you something on its own, but this upgrade and its subsequent tiers are best reserved for later when you're more comfortable with the game. Inversely, the core upgrades increase the number of points you start with for one per tier. Since you start with 8, this means when fully maxed out, you'll be chilling with either 12 or 16 core points at the start of your run. If we keep in mind that you can exchange one scrap for two core points from any scrapper, this doesn't look quite as promising as it does initially, but starting out with more core points means you don't need to spend as much scrap to equip all of your cores. So you'll definitely want this one at some point if you find yourself collecting a lot of core augments. Now, let's talk about the Recon Upgrade. Over the course of this video, you've probably noticed a number of different things. One of them being that, at the end of each level, you can choose one of three random stages of Tackle Dex. This is not the case by default, and what the Recon Upgrade offers you. This one effectively gives you some amount of control over how your run is going to look. Is there a certain power that you want early on to give you an edge in a later boss fight? This helps you do that. Is there a level whose mechanics are just so nightmarish at later levels that if it comes up past the midway point you feel that you're absolutely screwed? This can help with that. Just pick that level earlier so you can manage it and get it out of the way. How about if there's a level in boss that you're already super comfortable tackling? This can help with that. Shove that level to the end of the run where you're already at your strongest and enjoy the victory lap. So, if you guessed that my top must-have pick was going to be the Recon Upgrade, give yourself a hand. Because I'm at a point where I feel like I could do an Entropy Zero one with nothing but this upgrade maxed out. That's how highly I value this one. 
and I hope that if you can take away anything from this video, that it's at least about how valuable this one can be. One of the best parts of this upgrade is that by the time you have enough for both tiers, you should have a pretty good idea on what levels you find a breeze and which ones are giving you trouble so you can figure out how you want things to pan out. Alright, I think it's about time we talk about prototypes. These are really strong and only cost 30 Moria, but with no additional tiers or costs. So then you might ask, if it's entirely optional after you unlock it for no additional cost, why don't you unlock it with all the memoria you have? And the answer is simple, and something I alluded to when talking about Dally. It all comes down to probability. I don't exactly know how many NPC encounters the game decides appear in a given level, but I imagine there's a limit. When asking the question over in the official Discord, someone suggests that these encounters have a chance to replace chests. And if that's true, that means for someone like me, who feels confident in the action-oriented gameplay loop the game offers and finds most of the prototype augments to be a toss-up, I'd rather just have the chest or any other encounter. I used to have this unlocked, but after several run-ins, I found myself only walking away with a spiffy new prototype to try out to be roughly once every five encounters, since they only ever offer you two at a time. With the general rule being that one of them will be really strong but risky, while the other is less powerful but has fewer risks. So, for this one specifically, I suggest you familiarize yourself with the prototype list on the wiki or through testing them out in the game's level editor to come to your own conclusions on this one. Because I feel that everyone's answer is going to be different on this. Some people really enjoy the powerful and chaotic options they offer, while others might not. In the end, it's important to find what's most comfortable for you and come to your own conclusions through experimentation. But with that said, I want to respect it as a very strong option because it offers very strong options. They are gambles. So I'm going to put it all the way down here, even though it's not something that I personally use. Alright, next, let's talk about the Smuggler's Beacon. This one is a trap. You should only pick up and max this one out after you've gotten everything else you're looking for. This upgrade gives you something else to spend your memoria on besides the memory index upgrades that we've been talking about. Because it lets you trade memoria for augments on your next run, this one is extremely powerful and can very well help you snowball into getting clear after clear, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. If you don't have your first clear, you're going to want permanent upgrades to get closer and closer to, you, to that first clear. So getting this before your first clear is going to be both expensive and inefficient. You're going to risk spending more memoria than you'll end up gaining. And if you don't have your first clear yet, then you won't be able to really take advantage of this one. It's great that it costs only 50 at tier 1, but this one is absolutely going to the very top right because its buy-in price is deceptive, since you'll be spending a lot more memoria on the upgrades the smuggler offers you after the fact. Alright, next, let's talk about the shop inventory upgrade. This one expands how many augments each shop has per tier. And for an asking price of 100 to buy in, when the inventory of shops naturally expands as you get further and further into a run anyway, it's not exactly a must pick up. Sure, I understand that having more options to choose from early on in a run when you're at your weakest is a good idea. But for you to be able to buy what you're looking for, you're going to need a number of bolts. So you'll probably need several levels in the bolt upgrade we talked about earlier to really get some good usage out of this. As a standalone upgrade, it's just not as impactful to increase an inventory where you'll likely only be able to buy one or two cheap items tops if you're gunning for early upgrades, when doing so can preclude you from spending your bolts on health vending machines and stronger upgrades later on. So it's actually going pretty far here in the costly niche category. Even if, as a general rule of roguelikes, you want to get as powerful as you can as soon as possible by taking risks. But that only comes after you're comfortable enough with the game and its systems. And marginally increasing what the shops offer early on when you should be pushing your luck in early challenges just doesn't do enough for the cost. Alright, now we're going to talk about the configurator. You can think of this bad boy as a pricier expansion of the recon upgrade I gushed about earlier. This one lets you increase the likelihood of encountering a given level early on, either because you really want that boss's power or because you want to get it out of the way because if you save it for later, the mechanics in it will drive you nuts at higher difficulty levels. But that's just the first tier of this upgrade. The second tier takes a wholly separate approach, and instead it lets you choose any level and then decrease its likelihood from showing up earlier in a run, which means that you can save those levels and bosses that you're most comfortable at tackling for the very end of your run where you're at your strongest to ensure a clean ending. So you'd think this one will go with Recon, but unless you're really jonesing for a given power like I mentioned earlier, it's almost an extension of the Recon upgrade, and that one was already amazing. This is like the cherry on top of an already delicious ice cream sundae. 
it's really nice and it helps to top things off, but here on a tier list where I'm trying to save you time and memoria, it's excess. Definitely worth picking up later if you want it, but otherwise less impactful since it doesn't even give you a guarantee. Heck, if I'm being honest, even though I have it at tier 2, I never find myself using it simply because by the time I got everything that I wanted and then purchased this upgrade, I was comfortable with enough levels that the recon upgrade on its own meant I could chart favorable runs every time without even thinking about messing around with the configurator. So, can't really put it anywhere else but here. It could be really good, but it's really niche. It's kind of just a quality of life thing more than anything. Alright, we are down to the last one on the list with the highest buy-in price of 150 Memoria, Rerolls. It has four tiers, each one giving you a new reroll. And I'll be honest, this is a really good one. It definitely warrants its cost, but it costs a lot. And what it offers you isn't going to be all that good on its own. It lets you reroll any augment you find just lying around with another one at random. You can even do this to reroll cheap items in the shop to try and get really strong augments at a cheaper price. The problem though is really just the asking price when there are so many more consistent sources of power for you to invest your memoria into. That said, my favorite use for this one is to actually reroll core augments to try and hunt down my favorites and complete sets since they'll always reroll into another core augment. But this is one where each tier is on the pricey side, and it only ever gives you one extra reroll per tier. So just like the one before it, it's really just a luxury pick to help smooth out your runs and try to force some of your favorite items into play. It's powerful, but it's pricey. Woof, and that's all of them. Now, in closing, to recap my thoughts on what to prioritize for a fresh run of the game, my suggestion would be to grab the first level of salvaging and then get a mixture of health upgrades and the first tier of the auto tank before working on the second tier for salvaging and opening up more level options with the recon network. If you've made it this far, Thank you for watching, and I hope that this tier list helps. If it did, please give the video a like to help the YouTube algorithm pick it up and share it. If you'd like to see what 30xx is like, then please feel free to come by my stream since me and my friend Sonny the Candy Gal will be streaming a fresh run over on Twitch tomorrow night. That aside, this tier list comes from my own limited experience with 30xx, so I'd like to hear your thoughts down below in the comments to hear what you guys think. What are your absolute must-haves? Do you think I'm out of my mind with some of these ratings? Depending on feedback, I could even do a tier list covering the Titan Shards, or revisit this one and move some things around. But with all that said, thank you all once again, and happy hunting.